Why can't Netflix benefit from the crazy binge-watching rates? Will streaming platforms take over theaters? And what's the deal with VODs? Who lost the most money? And what movies and shows have been postponed? Here are some salty updates on how the film industry is suffering from this pandemic. Disney's going down? So, this is bigger than we can imagine. Mulan was supposed to premiere on March 27th, but understandably, the mouse decided to stay in its house and postponed its grand opening indefinitely. To be fair, lots of premieres are now being postponed, so why does this one matter so much? Turns out Disney had great expectations for the movie, calling it one of Disney's highest grossing hits of the year. Mulan cost $20 million to make, and the studio was expecting to make a huge profit, since the movie has enormous audience potential in China. It's no secret that success at the Chinese box office matters for many studios. So much so that they are willing to change scripts and reshoot some scenes just to fall under the Chinese strict censorship policies. As any big corporation, Disney was for sure counting on Mulan's revenue now, so this could potentially influence other projects in production. But that's not the worst part. Shockingly, Disney has lost almost 40% of their revenue. You won't believe it, because they've had to shut down some theme parks including the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, Disneyland Paris Resort, and the Disneyland Resort in Cali, a total of 11 theme parks across the globe. This sounds crazy, but as Action News Now reports, Disney made $26 billion in sales at its parks, experiences, and products division last year. 2020 has just started, and they've already lost a huge amount of money. Disney shares have fallen more than 20% since all this madness started. On top of that, Disney is suffering because the new mutants is stuck in limbo. You might think that no one gives a damn about X-Men anymore after the failure of Dark Phoenix and Hugh Jackman's exit. And you are right, except they tried to change it. After Disney bought Fox, and as a result, the rights to X-Men, the new mutants was supposed to reboot the franchise. It was meant to be a fresh start. And it was vitally important that this reboot went well so that it would appeal to the audience and build a new, loyal fan base. But if the hype cools down by the time the movie is released, it basically ruins the movie's impact. Plus, let's not forget about Antlers, another Disney Fox horror movie about Wendigo mythical creatures that was also postponed until who knows when. So yeah, not the best time for Disney and Fox. Besides that, Disney has also stopped working on seven movies that were in production including The Little Mermaid remake, Ridley Scott's Last Duel, starring Adam Driver, Matt Damon, and Ben Affleck, and Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley. Other studios, meanwhile. It will be quiet not only on the screen of the Quiet Play sequel, but also in the cinema too. Krasinski's second movie was set to premiere this March, but Krasinski posted on Instagram saying, One of the things I'm most proud of is that people have said our movie is one you have to see together. Well, due to the ever-changing circumstances of what's going on in the world around us, now is clearly not the time to do that. This uncertainty is what makes it tricky for the companies, because it's impossible to make any future plans and allocate finances. Just imagine, lending 5,000 bucks to a friend, but you were planning to go on vacation next month and wanted to use that money. Now you have absolutely no idea if you will ever be able to go on the trip because your friend doesn't know when he can pay you back. Super annoying, right? Now project that to million dollar companies. In contrast, Bondiana announced that they've postponed the premiere of No Time to Die to November. But there's no 100% assurance that Bond will be taking his enemies down then. So whether it will still be trending like it did when the trailer came out, we have no idea. Universal's Fast and Furious 9 has just announced that they have to reschedule the premiere to, get this, April of 2021. So it's a year! And while the sales of Love and the Time of Cholera have great chances of increasing, the happy ending for Lovebirds in the 21st century has been postponed until further notice. This list just gets longer every day. Our beloved TV series. While we are extremely thankful for the endless gift of online streaming services, TV series are going through some hard times too. Grey's Anatomy has been running for almost 16 years now, and yet it found its Stalperstein. The executive producer of the show made a decision to postpone the shooting for two weeks to make sure everybody on the cast and crew is safe. So the series wrapped up on 21 episodes right now, and there are only four episodes remaining until the finale. True fans of Grey's Anatomy know that the show does fantastic work when it comes to depicting pressing issues. It's clear that the screenwriters have scripts planned out for the next four episodes, but we wonder if there is a chance that they will include the plotline about pandemic panic sweeping the world. 
Grey's Anatomy was not the only show to cancel shooting. One of the crew members on Riverdale tested positive for COVID-19, so the showrunners decided to suspend production for a while. Which means Riverdale writers now have more time to revise the plotlines for Season 5. So thumbs up if you think they're going to include a storyline about a crazy pandemic virus, where Betty and co. will be saving the world without even majoring in biology. It doesn't sound crazier than the previous couple of seasons, you know. Apple TV's The Morning Show is also going on a vacation. So is The Walking Dead, final season of Supernatural, and 35 of NBC's shows. 35! Just imagine what an economic loss this will be to NBC Universal. The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Late Late Show with James Corden, and other beloved TV shows first announced that they are going to work without a live audience on the set. But after Trump declared a national emergency, it looks like even shooting with just a crew is not an option anymore. For example, Ellen confirmed that they have postponed shooting until March 30th. There are many more shows and series that have halted their productions, but it would take forever to name them all. What does this mean in general? This is a win for Netflix, right? Not so fast. Let me explain why this isn't actually so. Will Netflix take over the world? So just as any other sane television group, Netflix has shut down filming of all their TV series, which includes Stranger Things and Grace and Frankie. Stranger Things just dropped a video showing their table read for the new season, so yeah, it's just heartbreaking. But while Netflix loses a lot on production because of the lockdown, just like other companies, you may think that it benefits from people watching more at home. Quarantine, no matter how horrible it sounds, is the best time for binge-watching series and Netflix has loads and loads of options to choose from. But binge-watching doesn't help the platform at all. Netflix only charges a fixed amount per month, so there's no economic benefit from people spending time on their platform. Forbes also highlights some other reasons why Netflix is not winning in this situation. So according to Forbes, Netflix will be struggling to attract a new offshore audience, because in the state of emergency, people are less willing to pay for extra entertainment and prefer to prudently save money for more necessary things. Basically, Netflix's revenue from new subscriptions will be low, and they don't get any extra benefits from binge-watching because they don't have any ads on the platform. Disney+, Plus, Apple+, Plus, Hulu, Comcast's Peacock, and CBS All Access, in contrast, have advertising on their platforms, but, right now, lack the popular shows that Netflix has that attract such vast audiences. Coronavirus is changing the world of the film industry right now, because binge-watching platforms that have advertising is a goldmine. So Netflix really has to revise their policy and start thinking about including ads to increase their income. Seems like the future might be home theaters. Marvel and DC, who can finally win? Marvel, which is technically Disney, has lost to DC since 2009. So yeah, Disney is struck here again. Disney Plus had to put filming on hold for a couple of superhero series, like WandaVision, Loki and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But the global health crisis has affected not just series productions, but big screen Marvel Studios screenings too, like Shang-Chi. The director of the movie wasn't feeling good and self-isolated while waiting for the results of the test. However, Marvel hasn't yet announced if Black Widow's release date is going to be moved. The movie was originally set to premiere on May 1st. However, at the time of making this video, Marvel hasn't announced any delays, which is pretty weird. But we have an idea why this may be happening. Besides the confrontation between Natasha Romanova and Taskmaster, there's a bigger war at stake. Marvel vs. DC. June 4th happened to be the premiere date for DC's Wonder Woman. So it looks like Marvel still hopes that the quarantine won't last until May and Black Widow can be released as planned. Because if the shutdown lasts a bit longer, DC's Wonder Woman may be the first major superhero movie shown in theaters after a big home lockdown. So people will be more than ready to see a movie outside their homes. Well, that's just our guess. But on the bright side, the whole Hollywood hiatus is somehow making Chris Evans popular. Fans on Twitter started a hilarious trend, posting pics of what hand sanitizer Chris Evans could be. How the industry may change in general? Besides production showdowns, Hollywood is also going through a wave of celebs feeling ill because of the virus. For right now, it's Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita. Former Bond's girlfriend, Irina Kurilenko, Idris Elba, and Christopher Hivju, aka Tormund from GOT, have also tested positive for COVID-19. So it's clear that the economy and the film industry will definitely undergo some changes in the near future, and it seems that streaming platforms will have more opportunities to bloom. The Hollywood Reporter states that Hollywood may lose up to $20 billion by the end of May. So you can just imagine how big it is. For $20 billion, you can buy 400 family vacations to space via Space Adventures. And if the crisis goes beyond spring, 
the sums will be astronomical. So putting more effort into developing a streaming platform instead of a big screen project doesn't sound that crazy after all. To prevent losing money, big studio companies are doing their best to make movies available on demand immediately. The quickest time period between a big screen movie premiere and it being released on VOD was three months. Now studios have narrowed it down to 60 days. So you can already find a VOD version of The Gentleman in Frozen 2. Birds of Prey will be released on VOD on March 24th, and Universal will release VODs for Emma, The Hunt, and Invisible Man on March 20th. Meanwhile, we're hoping for a fast and safe recovery for everyone out there who is sick. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think about the movie industry making changes. And as always, stay awesome and healthy.